Nissan Navara in the Sahara, extreme off-roading in the sand dunes. We thrash the Nissan Navara pickup in Morocco to see if trucks are still as tough as they used to be. Our pick UPS are going soft. Thanks to brands making their trucks more like cars in recent years, you might think that these vehicles are losing their tough, workhorse edge. But what's the truth? We ventured out to eastern Morocco to thrash the Nissan Navara pickup in a range of different environments including rutted tracks in the wilderness, busy town streets and muddy savanna. The Navara's biggest test, though, was several hours of sand dune driving at Urgchebi in the Moroccan Sahara Desert. If there were ever a location that could break a modern-day pickup softer, it would be here. Signs that the Navara has become more car-like in its latest guise aren't hard to spot. If you ignore the load bay at the rear, you could mistake it for an SUV, the front end looks muscular with its overblown wheel arches and grille, there are LED daytime running lights and creases in bonnet and along the doors. The interior is even more of a giveaway. The dashboard has a very close resemblance to that of the brand subs like the Cash K and X Trail. There's black gloss plastic and leather on the center storage bin. You can even get creature comforts like satellite navigation, a 360-degree camera with parking sensors and a starter button. We'd normally praise manufacturers for making pick UPS like these more user-friendly and a more attractive option for more UK buyers, but this type of car has to endure much more than a usual family hatchback over its lifetime. Has Nissan taken its eye off the ball? The Navara is also quite novel among its pickup rivals, as its platform is one of very few in Europe that utilizes multi-link rear suspension provided you get the four-door double cab version. Christian Miala, head of product planning at Nissan says that the five-link rear suspension on the Navara performs even better at higher speeds and claims that the setup means that the car is more stable and predictable, meaning better handling. That in itself is quite car-like, but car-like doesn't really translate into will withstand the test of time, does it? Off-road in the Nissan Navara Our mega durability test started off by driving south from the town of Erfud, near the contentious border with Algeria. We drove past an imposing army base, a couple of police checkpoints and a military convoy as we headed towards the Saharan wilderness. Our first experience of off-roading came in the shape of some rocky tracks through beautiful savanna flatlands, as large mountain steps, dry riverbeds, and acacia trees passed us by. It was as if we were driving on the surface of Mars, with only sparse vegetation thrown in. We were purposely punishing with our Navara test car, so continued at a steady pace despite others breaking for severe DIPs and larger potholes. Despite this, the truck didn't break a sweat. The route we took led us to Gara Medway or a huge horseshoe-like rock formation that slopes towards the center. It has been used as a film location for quite a few blockbuster movies including The Mummy, Prince of Persia, Sands of Time and most recently, James Bond's Spectre. We climbed to the outer rim via a craggy track, as the pickup's beefy tires scrabbled for grip. There was real risk involved, as the track became slimmer the higher we got and the drop on one side grew steadily more intimidating. The end result of one wrong steering input in our Savannah Yellow Navarro would have been unlikely to buff out. After stopping to admire the view, we pointed our Navarra in the direction of the dunes. The route along the way became drier and dustier, two substantial hints as to what lay ahead. The terrain flattened out, too which meant we could stretch the Navara's legs a little more before its big test. Driving the Dunes As we meandered around small sand hills, we arrived at Urgchebi, a mass of sand dunes reaching heights of around 150 meters or 492 feet tall that has featured on Paris Dakar raids. We were called into a safety briefing with Ramon Vila, who has had experience with the Paris Dakar rally with Nissan during the early 2000s, who talked us through the best way to tackle the sea of sand that lay ahead of us. The technique is to accelerate hard going down the dunes and slowly lift off the throttle as you reach the summit of the next one.
The instructors and crew also spoke many times of having a happy engine, and we were was asked to keep the revs up between 2,500 and 3,500 RPM for maximum effectiveness when blasting uphill on a dune. When it came to putting that guidance into practice, however, it's harder than you think. You're essentially driving up and down slopes with 25% plus gradients in terrain that's similar to thick powder snow. There is real substance to the dunes beneath the tires, but surface grip is very limited when you're on the move. Making steering input seems largely useless as the wheels to scrabble for traction. There's very little reaction from the front wheels until it's too late and if you don't carry enough speed, before you get to the crest of the dune, you stop, dig yourself in and get stuck. Still though, after a few practice runs, we got the hang of it. The tactic is to floor the throttle and keep your conviction as you speed down and then up the inclines. After a few practice runs, the Navara came into its own, it danced around the dunes like a vehicle half its weight and had enough punch to get over even the steepest sand mountains in the area. When done right, dune driving is confidence inspiring, but the advice is to not get cocky. If you get too aggressive and crest a dune at an odd angle, you'll end up having the heart racing experience of a Navara tipping precariously to one side and lifting a rear wheel in protest. Thankfully, that's as bad as it got. In the end, the Navara took on the Sahara sand dunes and came out the other end unscathed. Out of the whole convoy of around 18 trucks, only one suffered superficial damage, and that was more down to oversee louse driving than anything else. Even after the dune trip, when the convoy made its way back onto the smooth country roads, the Navara showed no signs of stress. The test was to prove that modern-day pickup trucks hadn't gone soft on us. We can safely say that even though it has become more comfortable, more tech-laden, and more accessible to more people, the Nissan Navara can still take on the roughest terrain and win. Long live the pickup!